Each of us has a unique voice that is our oral signature. The voice is the instrument through which we converse, convey ideas and express emotions. As an instrument like any other, one can learn to play it well with focus on tempo, timbre, tone, emphasis, speed and volume. Two unmistakable voices come to mind, I have a dream and what a wonderful world, one of the Martin Luther King Jr. and the other of Louis Armstrong. It is still amazing how the pumping of air from the lungs to vibrate the vocal cords could create such a range. The quality of a voice depends on the position of the tongue, teeth and variation in pronunciation. There seem to exist three kinds of voices. One we speak with one when we think or ruminate and one when we write it. It is said metaphorically finding one's voice is a challenge for any author. An echo is the return of a voice. Silence is its absence. Though this can still communicate a lot, a voice can be gentle, stern and melodic, piercing, lilting. It can convey the Sugariness of flattery, intensity of passion, tenderness of seduction, coldness of reason, the disheartening tone of fatalism, or a critical voice of judgment. Voice is power. The marginalized have no voice. Therefore, the voice of justice reaches to help equally to when people speak in one voice against injustices. Democracy at its core implies diversity of voices. All spiritual traditions know the significance of the sound of the voice, recitations of sacred texts. The Gregorian chant mantra, repetitions and the azan call to prayer. Words or mantras become alive when infused with voice. In order to tune to the inner voice, quiet Solitude is required and the cacophony of the external ones needs to be hushed. One authentic voice that is difficult to ignore is the voice of conscience, that quietly audible, one that tells us don't do it. To express and to connect our two main human psychological needs, expressing feelings, needs, ideas that establish connection. This connection often explains why people shout, not because of physical distance, but the psychological one. From a mother's soothing melodious lullaby to the inspiring voice and words of a great speaker, the acoustic energy of a voice can lift us with warmth of enthusiasm or dampen our spirits. It is an instrument of impact, therefore a careful choice as to how to deploy it appealing to unite, helping to guide, asking to be reasonable or attempting disunite, creating disharmony. That may be the reason we can still hear the voices of those who have impacted our lives. However, we experience less of it because the epidemic of texting and emojis has left little scope for sensing the tonal quality, mood, nuance and the warmth of the spoken word. For this reason, I prefer sending voice messages. The singing of birds at dawn and dusk could be interpreted as the voice of joy. What they convey is that the world is meant to be celebrated. And here once again, Louis Armstrong's voice begins to resonate in our ears.